Hello and welcome to part 3 of this Unreal Engine tutorial series. In this video we'll be going through the basics of the engine and how to get started designing your first level and creating your first blueprints. In the center here you can see a template level laid out for us. Holding down the right mouse button and moving the mouse will allow us to move our camera around the level. Using WSAD while this mouse button is held down will also move the camera for us. Getting used to how this camera moves is important for quickly working through levels. You can see here a number of other actors, a lot of which might not make any sense until we look at them in the future. For starters, here is a player start, which I'm sure as you can guess is where our player will start upon playing this level. The chairs here are 3D models, which we'll be referring to as static meshes, as you can see in this little details pane here. The ground pieces are also static meshes as well. This is a template floor piece, which has had a material added to it. More on that later. The other actors you can see in this scene are the skylight, the atmospheric fog, this light source, which is a directional light, the two sphere reflections, and an audio cue called starter background cue. You can see that every time I select an element, it's reflected in the index on the upper right. Its details panel is also reflected in the bottom right. So if I want to change the static mesh, I would select it and edit it from these details. Up here are a few extra tools to help you navigate through the level and move your objects. This is a position grid snap value. I might refer to it as snaps later on, habitually, but you can change this value to anything you like. Now my object will jump in values of 100 rather than values of 10. Or for more precise detail, now my object will move in values of 5. You will notice here up in the upper left corner of the level is a message telling us that lighting needs to be rebuilt. Once you're done designing your level, you'll hit this button called build. This will build all the lighting in the level, making it ready to be played by your audience. But this is a much later process. If you'd like to play the current level you're on and get a feel for it, you can hit the play button. You can hear that the audio cue is triggered and moving around is exactly the same because we haven't got a character in this level. So automatically Unreal Engine lets us possess a camera actor. hop out of your level, press escape. Over on the left side, you can see a list of other actors that can be dragged in to this level. Here you can see the actors we talked about in the first video. The original actor, a pawn, and a character. We can also add lights to the scene, adjusting their details from the bottom right detail pane. Delete will delete any object that you can see. Control Z will bring everything back. If your level is becoming very heavy for your computer, you can switch to an unlit mode, which will show you what the level looks like without all the lighting details. as well as various other options, which we're unlikely to use anytime soon. Perspective will lock our camera to any of these following perspectives. And finally, the place we'll be doing most of our work the content browser. 
the very first thing I'd recommend you do before you start any new project, if you know that you're going to be using certain assets for your game, such as animations, blueprints, static meshes, user interfaces, I'd recommend creating folders for them now. This engine content here, I'd suggest treating it as a read-only. You can edit it, but there's no reason why you'd want to edit it at this point in time. If you'd like to hide it, you can click on the view options here and click on show engine content. You can see a folder for our starter content here, which has given us some architecture, which can be dragged straight into the level. Audio, which can be demoed from here. Blueprints, such as lights and effects. Materials, which would allow us to change the material of any of these meshes, such as the grass material here, which we'll likely use a lot of. Dragging and dropping will change the material. There's also shapes and textures, which in this case are used to make materials. All of this stuff will come in handy for getting a feel for your level without having to go looking for other assets. So the first thing we'll do is click on the content folder and create some new folders. The first one we'll call blueprints. The second we'll call animations. Another folder for static meshes. You can see that I'm not using spaces. And another for user interface. Or if you'd like, you can just call it UI. We'll be requiring other folders later on down the track, but for now we'll get started with these. The final folder we're going to create will be called Levels. And in this folder, we're going to create our first level. Click on the Levels folder, right click, and you'll see here we are prompted not only to create new folders, but also blueprint classes, levels, materials, particle systems, and substances. However, there are many more assets that we can create, such as animation blueprints, artificial intelligence blueprints, and many others which we'll cover as many as we can in these tutorials. Right now, the first one we want is a level. When naming any of your assets in Unreal Engine, I would recommend using a letter to define what it is. Later on down the track, you'll be dealing with hundreds, if not thousands of assets. So it's important to have them all labeled nice and neatly so you don't confuse yourself later on down the line. Right here was a perfect example of the autosave function. Autosave will try its best to save your work every 10 or so minutes. This might appear irritating, but it is a necessary evil. To rename something, press F2. This level will call test. L for level, underscore, and test. This will also be handy in case I drag and drop an asset to the wrong place by accident. Once we've done that, we're going to double click on this level. It's going to ask us if it would like to save this map. Most of the time you'll hit save. This time we won't. We won't be using that map anymore. Now we're presented with a truly brand new level. For most of our assets, the creation process will be the same. Using a designated folder, we'll create the class that we want. And if we want to access it later, will access it from the content browser.